Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sandy and I am the founder of Love You Candle Co. And in today's video, I am going to be testing for you guys a parasoy blend that I got from the Flaming Candle. And it's 52% soy and 48% paraffin. A lot of you have requested this, um, especially those of you that do use um, parasoy as your type of wax or you want to try it. Um, I'm going to be testing with these six straight-sided jars from Candle Science. And I'm going to be using three different types of wicks. Um, sorry, two different types of wicks, which is Eco, a CD, um, and I'm going to be using different sizes. So if you can see, this wax is pretty easy to cut. I use a fondant cutter, and it's very easy to work with as far as cutting wise. It's not hard. It's it's a it's a wax that definitely is not flaky. Um, but I do personally prefer, prefer slab, uh, but that's just my personal choice. No specific reason. I just got used to it, but I do like it. Um, and it's actually, for me, it's easier to work with when I'm kind of like putting it in the melter versus having to scoop up all these flakes of wax. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and weigh my wax that I'm going to use um, for the six candles. I need 48 ounces of wax. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and measure first the wax so then I can go ahead and transfer it to my um, tester pot. That's what I call it now. It's where I kind of like do all my testing um, for the different waxes that I'm going to use or if I, if I have a wholesale um, order where they want me to use a specific wax. So I do go through a lot of testing phase with waxes because with the wholesale orders that I do get, some customers, vendors will request a parasoy blend. Some, they want soy. Some, um, they want coconut. It all depends on what they want. I was actually surprised on how a lot of these vendors, they know what wax they want you, you know, to work with and what they want to carry in their store. So if you are venturing into wholesale, just keep in mind that you want to do, you do want to give your um, vendor that option of whatever wax they want to use if they're that knowledgeable. So here I have my Presto pot and I'm just transferring all the wax here. So in mouse, this is my little testing station. Um, it's not where I make all my ma um, my big bulk of candles. That's actually a separate station. This is this is the station that I have right here specifically for testing fragrances, custom blends, pretty much everything. I am so sorry if I'm talking really fast, but this is the first time I'm doing a video like this. And honestly, it's it's a lot to keep up with. Um, so here are the six jars. I'm actually going to wick them now. If you see, I already pre-labeled them. That's an equal 10. And I'm starting off with 10% fragrance oil. This particular wax right here does hold up to 12%. I usually use anywhere between 8 and 10, depending on the fragrance and the wax that I'm using. Um, I will see, okay, what 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 percentage am I going to use? So from this 10, I will either go down or go up depending. I have never had to use more than 10%. Only when I do my uh, wax melt is that I go up to 15. And usually that's because that type of wax holds up to 18% of, um, of fragrance oil. So my wick placer, my kids lost it. So I actually made a homemade one out of straws. <laughs> if you guys can see here, my little bootleg um, uh, wick placer. I actually got two straws with hot glue gun and I glued them together and that's what I've been using. I haven't gotten around to order another one. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I'm going to. Um, but right now what I'm doing is that I'm wicking all of my um, my jars and I usually grab the scissors just to kind of like secure the wick a little bit more. What I have noticed is that some of you um, will go ahead and take the stickers off of the wicks first and then place the wicks on top of the stickers. And then from there, you will go ahead and take the, the wick off with the sticker already on it and place it on the candle, on the jar, I mean. But if you look at how I'm doing it, I actually take the sticker out first, I stick it to the wick, and then I take the sticker off and then put it, um, wick it to the jar. The reason why I do it like this, because I have been asked this question before, why do you do things like this? Um, why do you wick them, the stickers this way? 
because in my testing, this is just me personally, it may not work for you. I don't know. But for me personally, I have found that I don't need to add glue or anything else when I do it this way. And it actually does secure the wick. And the wick, once I pour the wax, I've never had a wick come off of the sticker. So it's what's worked for me. So this is kind of like how I do it. Um, as you can see, that's um, there you go. Um, I put it, I place it in the wick holder, then I take the sticker off and then I put it um, to the jar. So I don't know, give it a try, see if it works out for you. Honestly, guys, there's not a right or wrong way because this is your journey. This is your testing. These are your candles. So you kind of have to do what you know works out for you. And if you can see, it's completely sealed um, because you don't have that air bubble at the bottom, which with when you work with clear glass, you're able to see that. Um, but what right now what I'm waking is I'm using an equal 10, 12, 14, um, and 16. And I am also using two Ecos that I typically use with my other candles, two Eco twos. And I'm also using a CD 10. 10 is the one that I had because I actually ran out of the other ones. But another wick that is recommended to use with this type of wax, you can use an HTP um, wick. I know that they've been sold out with different suppliers. So you kind of like, just have to look. But if you are going to test with this wax, with this wax, I would recommend you to get all three, the Eco CD and HTP, and see how it works out for you. Um, so I'm almost finished wicking, um, wicking these candles. And this little guy right here that you see, I love it for my double wicking because it honestly, it's the best little apparatus that I have found on the market that allows my wicks to stay, stay centered and in place. And they're really easy to use and very practical. Um, and then for my single, honestly, I do like these little clips better than the ribbons. Um, they're just much easier to use. I would not recommend it if you're double wicking. When it's double wicking, then it becomes a little tedious. But if you are using a single wick, these little guys are very cheap. You could buy them on Amazon. They're actually on my Amazon um, um, store and they're very easy to use, very quick. And um, I'm going a little bit slow here, but they're very easy to use. So I would highly recommend them if you are looking for like a wick center that you have not been able to find, especially if you're just getting started. As you can see, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, so this wax right here, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you did get that for 22 pounds, it's $46.69. It's pretty reasonable. I have not seen the wax go up, even though right now, if you have noticed, there's a lot of supplies that have gone up and some of them are over the roof. It has a lot to do, you know, with the economy, the inflation, everything that's going on right now. But I will be making a separate video going over this, you know, this whole entire um, situation with the supplies, because I do see in the groups, a lot of people, you know, are having big concerns over if they're going to stay in business. So here's where I'm going to go ahead and um, um, put the jars because I will be pouring um, the wax here once it's ready. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to weigh my fragrance oil and my formula for 48 um, ounces of wax. I will go ahead and do 48 ounces of wax and I multiply that by 0 0.10, which that is my 10% fragrance oil, which that is going to give me 4.80 of ounces of fragrance oil that I need um, for the candles that I'm gonna use. So I usually use these little glasses. I don't use plastic anymore. I know that if you've seen some of my earlier videos, you'll see that I was using these little plastic cups but I stopped using them. I use, I actually just use for recycling purposes, um, glass and it works out very well. So here we are that um, I already poured my wax. And just so you guys know, I've, as I told you before, I do um, heat up my wax to 200, um, 195. And I usually pour the fragrance oil between 195, 190. Um, your fragrance oil is not going to burn if you pour it when it's really hot. I just, with my testing again, I just feel that this is the sweet spot for me, my candles and my products. 
um, to go ahead and add the fragrance oil. So don't be scared. It's not going to burn. I feel like I get amazing, great results from this. Um, so here I poured the fragrance oil and I'm just going to stir it for a little bit. This particular wax, I don't know if it behaves, doesn't cooperate, you stir it too much. I know that pure, pure soy, especially 464 does if you over stir it, if you over stir it, sorry. If you over stir it, it just doesn't like cooperate sometimes. I've heard that and I've had that happen to me before. One of the reasons why I didn't like to use 464, but it's not bad if you can handle it, that's great. Um, so I stopped using the, um, the little, um, the little digital, um, gun as a thermometer because I was getting inaccuracies. So I use thermometers that, I, um, like this one that you just saw where I can get an accurate temperature for my wax. I don't like the big range that the gun was giving me. So that's why I stopped using it. Um, so just stir it a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do is that to pour in my candles, um, I pour, like I mentioned before, I pour between 190 and um, 185. I try not to, um, but to pour it into the candle, I pour between 175 and 180. That is my sweet spot right there to pour my wax into my jars once they're done. So the reason why I keep the temperature that high up is because I do use this funnel and this funnel, you can get it from Amazon. It's actually a baking funnel and it's a lifesaver. Every candle maker should have it. But the minute that I transfer the wax into the funnel, the temperature is going to drop slightly. And that is the reason why I like to pour it at a higher temperature. Um, I have been told um, that I'm very generous with my fill volume, and that is correct. I am. Um, I do sometimes go over these candles. Um, I list them at nine ounces because nine ounces do go in here, but sometimes I add a little bit more, um, but I usually do list them at between 8.5 and nine ounces. Um, Sorry about that, guys. Um, so yeah, I'm pouring the rest of it and um, you just pour little by little, but it makes pouring the candles. So pouring the wax into your jar so much easier. And also it gives you more control. That way you don't have spills. Um, this little guy, I think it was like 25 and 30 bucks. Um, maybe it's cheaper, I don't really remember, but you can find the funnel also in my Amazon store. Um, the link will be in the description box as, uh, box as well. Um, so I'm finishing up here and I cannot wait to give you guys feedback on how these candles perform. This type of wax, you do have to allow it to cure for two weeks. However, for testing purposes, I'm not going to wait the two weeks for testing because what I'm trying to find out here is what wick is going to work with this with these jars and um, with this wax. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut the wick now. I usually use a scissor. Um, I don't use the wick trimmer because um, sometimes it, it acts a little funky. I have better um, experience using the wick trimmers once I light up the candle, but when the candle's brand new like this, I just like to use the scissors. I just get a cleaner cut. Um, so, once I light these up, I will be able to share with you guys what I thought, my conclusion. I have a feeling, I have a strong feeling that the CD wick is going to work better with this wax. I'm not sure, only because of the parasoy blend. So Eco works very well with soy waxes. Um, but I do know that for um, paraffin, CD works a lot better. So here's a little preview after, um, I believe this is after like two, um, three hours. I have to look at my notebook, but I think this is after like three hours, almost four hours. We're almost at about four hours and this is how they're burning so far. So the way I um, go ahead and test also is that I let them burn 
um, for four hours at a time. I turn them off and then I relight them. So I don't do the burn test where I just leave the candle on for as long as it can go without it blowing up. No, I don't do my testing like that. I do a realistic testing. The realistic testing for me is I burn the candle for four hours because you're not supposed to light up a candle for more than four hours. So I light it up for four hours. I see what candle pretty much um, got a whole a full melt pool within the four hours and I kind of grade them from there I let it cool down let the wax sol solidify again and then I'll relight them every four hours so I'm doing the testing every four hours every four hours so I will be back with a final review of this wax but for now I hope you guys enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe and comment thank you